welcome to another edition of Eye Care Today. I am your host, Dr. Thomas Kisslin. And once again, we're coming to you from our Hazleton location on the Hazleton Beltway. At Hazleton Eye Specials, our phone number, as always, if there's any questions, is 453-2020. And at our Stroudsburg location, our uh, phone number is 421-3342. And in Stroudsburg, we're on uh, 852 North 9th Street. Our uh, web address is www.drkisselin.com, and you can check out our website. And as always, you can watch our show 24-7 on uh, Samsung Productions' website. That's www.ssptv.com. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about some common conditions that affect the eye. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I've been getting a lot of questions from patients just uh, about, in general, um, some general eye conditions and what parts of the eye they affect and how the eye works. So um, I brought with me today my, my trusty eye model and I'm going to be referencing this model a lot today. And basically what I want to do is start from front to back and go through the parts of the eye, uh, how the eye works very briefly, and start with some common conditions uh, that affect the eye. Um, I do want to say in today's show, um, toward the end, we're going to be talking about some exciting news as far as macular degeneration goes. And I also uh, want to let everyone know to watch for our show next month. Um, I'm very fortunate uh, that uh, later this week I'm actually going to be leaving for a seven-day trip to Norway. I was actually invited along with Dr. Mitch Feynman, who is the head of the retina department down at Will's Eye Hospital. Uh, we were invited to go to Norway and tour the facility where the omega-3s that you've heard a lot of us talk about uh, a lot lately, um, uh, where the omega-3s are made and purified, and I'm going to be taking a lot of pictures and come back, and we're actually going to do our next show on exactly how omega-3s are made and why the uh, physician-recommended nutraceuticals are so special and why they can help not only the eyes but the rest of your body. So uh, please watch for our show uh, next month uh, about omega-3s and their production. Um, we're going to have a lot of footage, uh, pictures from, from Norway, so look for that. Uh, so let's get back to our eye model and let's start with um, exactly how we see. What we have to remember is light actually has to come into the eye. So light comes through the front of the eye and the first part of the eye it hits is actually the cornea. The cornea is the clear covering uh, over the front of the eye and we see because this cornea is clear. So any disease that causes a clouding of this cornea is going to decrease how well we see. So we're going to talk about a couple of conditions that affect the cornea. And after light goes through the cornea, it goes through the pupil, which is the hole in the front part of the eye. That pupil gets bigger and smaller depending on how much light we um, have. Uh, so example, it's a bright sunny day, that pupil actually gets uh, smaller. And uh, if it's nighttime, that pupil actually expands so that more light can come into the eye. So light again goes through the pupil and then it's actually focused by the lens of the eye which is inside the eye. Uh, this lens of the eye is just like the lens of a camera. It focuses and, and refocuses and allows light to uh, get precisely focused onto the retina which is the back of the eye. And that lens of the eye is actually the part of the eye that turns into a cataract. When we're born this lens again is clear and as we age, it actually turns yellow or brown in color. Uh, very slowly, it starts to discolor, and that's actually what a cataract is. Uh, patients feel that um, sometimes a cataract is a um, film that grows over the front of the eye, and it's actually not. A cataract is actually a clouding of the lens inside the eye. So this is the part of the eye that turns into a cataract, and with cataract surgery, that lens is actually removed and we put an implant in it. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, new technology that's affecting that part of the eye. And then light goes um, from the lens and is focused onto the retina. And the retina is basically the, the film in the camera that develops the picture. Uh, the retina takes that picture, the message is then sent through the optic nerve, which then goes to the back of our brain called the, called the occipital cortex, and that's where all the messaging is processed and allows us to see. So that's how the, the whole visual system uh, act actually works. So let's start at the front of the eye and talk a little bit about the cornea. Um, again, the cornea, the front part of the eyeball, uh, where light comes in first. And one of the most common conditions that affects the front of the eye or the cornea is actually dry eye disease. 
Dry eye disease affects over 50 million Americans every year. It's uh, more common in women, 5 to 1 women versus men. Very common in women um, aged 35 to 65. That's the general um, uh, epidemiological uh, group that is affected. And women who wear contact lenses are more affected. Women who are either peri- or postmenopausal uh, are also affected. We know there's a hormonal component to dry eye disease. Um, and medicines we take can affect dry eye. So, for example, if we're taking uh, antihypertensive medications, uh, anti-anxiety, antidepressive medications, uh, hormone replacement, uh, medicines uh, uh, such as antihistamines, uh, drugs like that can actually dry the eyes out. So dry eye uh, can not only be um, age-related, but also uh, medication-related, can be environmental. If we work in an office where there's a lot of heat blowing or air conditioning blowing, uh, that can affect the eye, um, the cornea, and uh, cause dry eye. And, and again, you, you've heard me talk about a lot of the treatments for dry eye, and just to briefly review them, artificial tears can help, but unfortunately, um, artificial tears are only palliative. They don't really fix the problem. So my general rule of thumb is if a patient has to use artificial tears more than two to three times a day, we tend to go to something a little bit more aggressive, such as a prescription drop called Restasis. Restasis is a twice a day drop that actually helps the eyes to produce more tears. Um, you've actually seen on one of our shows, I've actually inserted what are called punctal plugs into the tear ducts. These are little tiny plugs that prevent the tears that we are making from draining as quickly. Uh, keeps more lubrication on the surface of the eye, so punctal plugs can be very effective. And of course, you've heard me talk a lot about the omega-3s and omega dry eye, again by physician recommended nutraceuticals, is uh, without a doubt the best uh, omega-3 product on the market for dry eye. Um, the proper dosing, which is a minimum of four a day, can substantially reduce dry eye symptoms uh, lead to better tear production and less problems with the cornea. And what's nice about the physician recommended nutraceuticals is now that they've actually, they've actually added vitamin D3 into their formulation uh, of their omega-3. So the dry eye omega benefits formula um, not only uh, again helps the eyes but actually can help the rest of the body because again omega-3s actually uh, can cause a decrease in cardiovascular issues, can help lower cholesterol, um, uh, help any problems such as dry skin, uh, joint disease, things like that. So uh, omega-3s are extremely beneficial, not just for the whole body, but again, like I said, for dry eye. So it's important to treat dry eye disease because again, if the front of the eye actually gets dry, we can actually, it can actually lead to scarring, it can lead to infections, and those conditions cause a decrease in vision because again, the first thing that light hits when it comes uh, into the eye is the cornea. So if this cornea is not pristine, we are definitely going to have some, some vision problems. So it's very common for patients to actually say that as, my, as the day goes on, my eyes dry out, um, my vision is not as good at the end of the day when I'm driving home at night. Um, so that's one of the first complaints I'll hear from patients uh, is fluctuating vision when they have dry eye disease. So we really um, aggressively manage that to help their vision. What I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're actually going to focus on the middle part of the eye, the lens of the eye, and we're going to talk about some conditions that affect that and some exciting news about macular degeneration. So stay right there. Uh, you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissel, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissel, and you're watching Eye Care Today. And today we're talking about uh, some common conditions that affect the eye. And in the last segment, we briefly went through how the eye works. I have my little eye model here. And we were focusing on the front part of the eye, the cornea, and a common disease, dry eye disease, that affects the front of the eye. And I now want to move to the middle of the eye. I'm just going to take this cornea off here for a second. And we're going to focus on the lens of the eye, which is right uh, in the middle part of the eye. And again, the lens is actually what focuses light onto the retina. And um, cataract surgery has become such a simple surgery nowadays. We can really improve patients when their vision is starting to decline because of a cataract. And again, remember a cataract is where this lens actually becomes yellow or brown in color, decreases our vision. A six, seven minute procedure now allows us to remove actually this 
cataract by using uh, ultrasound and an implant is put in. The implants have gotten um, incredibly precise nowadays. We can actually take a patient's glasses prescription, put it in this implant so they no longer need glasses for driving, and now they actually have what are called multifocal implants where we can eliminate the patient's um, dependency on uh, not only far away glasses but actually bifocals also. What has really um, been a great stride though is not only in this part of the eye but on the retina is a new development as far as macular degeneration goes. And again, macular degeneration is a condition where the retina or the back of the eye actually starts to degenerate away and not work as good as it used to and we actually can lose our central vision. Um, up until this point, there really has not been uh, a fantastic treatment for macular degeneration, especially the dry form. Again, there's two forms of macular degeneration. There's the dry form, and there's what's called the wet form. The wet form involves bleeding in the retina. Um, that form, we can actually use injections of a medicine into the eye. But the dry form, the only thing we've had up until this point is some vitamins, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. There's been some strides as far as that goes. But the FDA has just um, actually approved on July 6th of this year um, a new telescope implant that is actually inserted where the lens of the eye used to be. Actually what is done, uh, it's a surgical procedure where the lens of the eye is actually removed. So this lens is removed and an implant that has a telescope actually in the implant is reinserted into this position. Now, it's the same basic procedure as cataract surgery, but it's a little bit longer. It requires about 11 sutures, requires an extremely skilled surgeon to do. Um, and what's interesting is a patient that has macular degeneration, through the use of this now mini telescope that actually sits inside the eye, can help restore um, partial vision. And I just want to read some statistics to you as far as what kind of results uh, were being had in the FDA uh, studies. 67% um, of patients, so that's almost 70% of patients, achieved a three line or greater improvement in distance visual acuity in the eye with the implant. Um, so 70% of patients, three lines or better um, visual acuity. Uh, a quarter of the patients, 25% of patients um, with the implant achieved a five line or greater improvement. So five lines or greater, just to give you an idea what that is, I'll have patients come in with macular degeneration and they cannot see the big E. So now not only can they see the big E, but they can actually go halfway down that eye chart. So that could be the difference between being able to watch TV, being able to recognize your grandson or granddaughter's face, being able to look at pictures, um, being able to be in a car, maybe not drive, but be, being able to be in a car and actually see um, signs and, and things like that, going to the store and being able to see in the store. So these implants are going to really be able to give patients a lot of their freedom back um, that, that they've lost with the macular degeneration. Now what also is going to be happening though, this product probably is not going to be available for maybe a year or so. Um, right now the FDA has asked uh, that there be a uh, two-year post-approval study. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to uh, be enrolling patients to look at um, any side effects that may happen from this implant for about two years. Um, now what usually happens in that time frame is the product is still approved, but if there's any problems they will pull it from the market. The only problems that really they expect with this implant is that there might be some swelling from the implant to again the cornea which is this clear covering. And um, honestly when someone has macular degeneration um, we're not as worried about the cornea um, and some clouding as maybe would be in a normal person. Um, so you know that may not be as big an issue as we think it's, it's going to be. Um, so this post-approval process, even though it may take two years, we might see this implant actually available to retinal surgeons uh, in the near future. Now it's interesting, uh, retinal surgeons are going to be actually prescribing this implant, but a fellowship trained cornea specialist will actually do the implantation because it requires a very fine surgery. So uh, in our office here, Dr. Frank Bucci uh, would, a would actually be the one performing uh, this implantation. But again, uh, this implant is not 
uh, available yet on the market. Even though it was approved, it is still not out. We expect it to be out very soon, maybe by the end of 2010. So make sure to stay tuned to iCare today and we will keep you up to date on uh, any news as far as when exactly this implant will be available in our area. Some of the pilot studies for this implant were actually performed down at John Hopkins, um, actually up, uh, up north a little bit, up in Massachusetts. Uh, UCLA was actually one of the centers also. So there were multiple sites around the country where they were looking at this implant. Um, we're also going to put the information up on the screen about the company who um, actually designed this implant and anyone who has access to the internet can actually Google their name and um, actually look for yourselves and, and uh, gain some knowledge about this, uh, this implant, especially if you have macular degeneration or you have a family member or friend who has uh, the dry form of macular degeneration. This is something that has the potential to help restore a patient's vision down the road. So again, what we're talking about, folks, is a mini telescope that is actually inserted into an implant and is put in, just like we would do cataract surgery, where the lens of the eye sits. And if someone has had cataract surgery in the past, this can still be done. Now, it's a little bit um, more involved procedure because the implant that was previously put in actually has to be removed, and this new implant with the mini telescope inside has to be um, has to be inserted. So that's a little bit longer process and procedure, but again, it can be done. So some exciting news on the uh, front of macular degeneration that we're seeing. And again, stay tuned to Eye Care today. We'll make sure to keep you up to date. What I want to do, folks, is we're going to take a uh, another quick break here. When we come back in our next segment, we're going to talk about macular degeneration again and some uh, new research and some information that's out as far as some vitamins uh, that can be very helpful for preventing the progression of macular degeneration. Uh, so uh, stay tuned to Eye Care Today. Again, I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissel, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. You're watching Eye Care Today. I am your host, Dr. Thomas Kisslin. In our last segment, we were talking about a mini telescope that can actually be implanted into the front part of the eye here to help patients with macular degeneration. Um, on this segment, what I want to talk about is more about macular degeneration, which affects the back of the eye or the retina. And there's been some new research and some new things that have come out as far as some um, nutritional supplementation that can uh, help macular degeneration. Before I get to that, though, I want to remind everyone to, to watch for uh, next month's show. Uh, again, like I said in the beginning of the show, just to remind everyone, um, I was very fortunate to be invited along with Dr. Mitch Feynman, who is the head of the retina department down at Will's Eye in Philadelphia, and we were invited out over to Norway to actually tour the facility where the physician-recommended nutraceuticals are actually made, uh, to actually see the purification process, so I'll be sure to uh, be taking a lot of pictures, and I'm, I'm going to share them with uh, everyone out there uh, on our next show, so be sure to uh, watch for that. But talking about nutraceuticals, um, macular degeneration, again, is a condition that can severely uh, impair a patient's central vision because it damages the, the retina or the back of the eye. And through research, we, we know now that macular degeneration can be slowed and in some cases uh, a little bit of vision restored by the supplementation with omega-3s. And again, physician recommended nutraceuticals a couple years ago came out with an eye omega advantage formulation, which has uh, the proper amounts of omega 3s, but also lutein and zeaxanthin, which uh, are extremely important for retinal health. But what's new uh, just recently, and again, this uh, was spearheaded by the physicians down at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia, they actually helped formulate a new multivitamin. Uh, formula uh, for macular degeneration. Now, just to let everyone know out there, the standard of care for macular degeneration um, is that pa any patient with macular degeneration should be on omega-3s and a multivitamin supplement. It's important to remember that omega-3s are not vitamins. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids. They're essential nutrients that our body needs. It is not a vitamin. It's a, an essential fatty acid. So they need to be on both products. Patients with macular degeneration, let me repeat this because it's extremely important, need to be on an omega-3, 
with lutein and zeaxanthin and vitamin D3, which the Omega um, I Advantage product, the I Omega Advantage product is, but also a multivitamin. And in the past, one of the best multivitamins out there has been Preservision by Bausch & Lomb. But like I said just recently, the retina department at Will's Eye actually helped uh, develop a new multivitamin specifically for macular degeneration. And I have that right here that we can show you. It's the macular vitamin benefit. And I briefly want to just go through what exactly is in this because it's really a fantastic product. And uh, w what else is nice about it, it's actually a water soluble. A lot of vitamins out there are fat soluble, which means our body excretes them without really um, getting absorbed into our blood. This is actually a water soluble vitamin. And what's in it is vitamin C, um, vitamin E, but in a, a natural form. A lot of the vitamin E that's found on the market is in a synthetic form and is not absorbed. And this is actually in a natural form which is highly absorbed. We have thiamine in this product, riboflavin, niacin. Niacin has been shown to have very high anti-inflammatory properties also, and that's not only important for macular degeneration, but niacin actually can help um, raise your good cholesterols, which are your HDLs. So not only will you be helping your retina, but you actually, uh, again, will be helping your general health. Um, vitamin B6 and B12 is in this product. Folate, biotin, pantothenic acid, zinc, and copper. And again, what, what makes this product really special also is there's no vitamin A. And um, this is extremely important to remember also, folks, vitamin A has actually been shown in the form of uh, beta carotene actually to cause an increase in the progression of macular degeneration. And I want to say that again because again this is extremely important. Uh, if you have macular degeneration, vitamin A has been shown to actually increase the progression of macular degeneration. We used to think beta carotene was, um, you know, was this great thing and we've actually found now that that, that is not the case. Especially if you are a smoker. Um, not only has vitamin A been shown to make macular degeneration worse, but it actually has been shown to um, progress lung cancer in patients who smoke. So really there is no place for vitamin A in um, uh, the diet, um, in any supplementation uh, for a patient with macular degeneration or um, a patient who smokes. So if, you're, if you have macular degeneration or smoke and you're taking a supplement, make sure there's no vitamin A in that. And again, if you have any questions about that, feel free to contact our office. We'll put the phone numbers on the screen again. So this is a product that has no vitamin A in it. And again, I, I want to go over what's in this because the Preservision by Bausch & Lomb has nothing that compares to this. Um, has vitamin C, a natural form of vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, folate, biotin, pantothenic acid, zinc, and copper. And these are vitamins that a lot of times our body lacks, so extremely important um, that the macular vitamin along with the omega-3s are taken um, for supplementation in patients who have macular degeneration. I also want to share with you the results of a study, uh, again, staying on the theme of omega-3s and general health. Um, this was a study that was actually funded by the um, Centers for Disease Control, so the CDC, um, and the Association for Schools of Public Health. And what they actually looked at was some statistics as far as death rates go in patients in the United States. And when I first read this study, I did a double take because I, I couldn't believe this was true. But they actually found that there were close to 95,000 preventable deaths in the United States due to omega-3 deficiency. So what that means in the United States, folks, our diets are so concentrated in omega-6s, which are the bad um, omegas, processed foods are very high in omega-6s. They found that because of our diets and our lack of omega-3 supplementation that there were 95,000 preventable deaths in the United States due to omega-3 deficiency. And that number is just startling. So by doing something, something so simple as um, eating a little better, eliminating some of the processed foods in our diets, and supplementing with omega-3s because again, remember, omega-3s are essential nutrients our body doesn't make them, our body does not store them, so they actually have to be ingested. 
So we either have to eat fish about six, seven times a day, which we'd end up with mercury poisoning if that happened, um, or we have to supplement with an omega-3. So again, if you have an eye condition that your physician actually recommends omega-3s, make sure number one, it's the physician recommended nutraceutical brand because it's the best brand out there, um, and make sure it's the proper dosing. It should be about two to three grams a day. And again, um, there's the omega dry eye, and there's Omega Eye for macular degeneration. Um, these are two great products, and they also make a product called Omega Flex, which is an excellent product that uh, is used for patients um, that have joint disease, arthritis, skin problems, and just overall general health. So um, there's products out there that can be extremely beneficial. As always, folks, if there's any questions, please feel free to contact our office. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Our Hazelton location, 453-2020, Stroudsburg, uh, 421 3342, our website www.drkislin.com. Remember, next month's show, I'm going to talk to you about how fish oil is actually produced. I'm going to bring some pictures back from my Norway trip along with Dr. Feynman from Will's Eye. So be sure to catch that show. As always, folks, uh, thank you for allowing us into your living room. Um, have a great day. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kislin. You have a great day.